I'm Allie. I came out after 20 years of marriage and I have three kids. I'm Melissa and I have two kids and I came out at 37 after an 11 year marriage. This podcast is about coming out later and the struggles and victories that come with it. When coming out feels like the end of the world, but it's really just the beginning. This is the Lesbian Chronicles. Welcome to the Lesbian Chronicles. Here we go. Let's Here dive go. in. Without my fancy board. I know we don't, uh, we're just bare bones in it today. You yes. know, we don't have a plan. Well, well, we have a we, mild plan. Yeah, we have a loose plan. Um, well, the reason that this, well, first of all, how are you, my friend? I'm, I'm hanging in there. Doing, yeah. Okay. Um, you, um, I ended up going out of town for a couple of days cause it was my mom's 80th birthday. Oh, wow. And I surprised her. She had no idea I was coming. And, oh my God. Um, how did that go? It was so fun. We went to this, my dad had planned. You didn't kill her. That's good. There's always no, didn't a kill her. My mom is you're... very, very, she seems like a 60 year old. Like mm. this is a woman who jumps in and out of boats. She's like, a can ski. She can ski like black diamond. Still? Mountains. Still. Okay. Damn. So she's kind of a badass. But anyway, so I walk in and to the restaurant and I, she has no idea I'm coming. And I pretend I'm the waiter. Like I walk over and I'm like, hey, welcome to Banyan House. Can I take your order? Oh my God. And um, she just literally started bawling. Oh my God. She was so excited. I'm surprised she like, I feel like a lot of people, when you get surprised, you can't register who it is at first, Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like your yeah. brain takes a minute to like catch up, but she, she... thought that, um, my dad has this like trip plan for her that she just assumed she wasn't going to see me on her birthday and that she would see me on the trip. And mm -hmm. so she was just completely shocked. Wow. That's yeah. cool. Yep. Aww. It was quick. I mean, I just went for like two nights. Yeah. But Aww. anyway, I got home late yesterday and, um, here we are. Here we are. Um, yeah. yeah I'm like, what have I been doing this week? I, know, I feel like everything's working. just a blur. Cause yeah, all I've been doing is working and taking care of the kids. And, um, I, I don't even know, like yeah. I just shot an audition this morning, like nice. commercial work. I haven't, I haven't played golf in like two years. And I put it down on my little like skill sheet that I know how to play golf. Yeah. And here I am yesterday getting an audition request for someone who knows how to golf, not like a pro golfer, but just knows how to swing a club. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw the video I posted on Instagram, but I posted one of my outtakes of like, I swing it, the ball hits my fence and then it hits like behind me, like hits my house. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, oh you look God. You like a golfer right now. Well, I, I was wearing this hat for the part where I was swinging a club. Because they, they want you to like read the lines, but then they also want you to show that you can swing a golf club. So um, I, it was like really short notice too. Like they wanted it submitted by like three o'clock today and I got it yesterday. So a um, bit of a, a haste to rush around and get that done. That's uh, awesome though. I think about, um, I took golf in college. Oh, like, really? It was like a, what do you, I don't, I forget what you call it, but it's like, you were like, there's going to be some lesbians in here. Yeah, exactly. I probably was, but uh, I took it. And, um, I just remember thinking like, I don't know, I never got any good and I have no memory of like how you score or do any of it. But... You know, what's funny is I really don't give a shit about any of that aspect. I like to just go and like hit the ball. Um, and it's been a minute since I've gone and like played on a course and stuff like that. Really what I like to do is go to the driving range. Yeah. Like, it's just like a good, like energy release, but just haven't really been doing that anymore. Um, I will say like, I guess to tie this into something gay, um, one thing that I really hate about auditioning is that like, I feel like I just come across so gay oh, and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, they don't want a gay person for this why role. am i playing this role gay why am i playing a gay <laughs> exactly. and i can't help it oh, and so, it's more so it's not so much like on screen talking necessarily but like swinging in the golf club i'm like i look gay yeah, they're gonna, really gay. Maybe, they're gonna they be able to tell. maybe they want that i don't know but i think it's supposed to be like a husband and wife so oh, maybe shit. it's just a wife who hasn't come out yet 
Yeah, it's true. Stuff. It's true. That's <laughs> really funny. It's kind of like though, when you see somebody like they, they're just looking at your profile, but when you like, I've had this happen where I see somebody's profile for what, whatever, maybe it'd be for a job interview or something. And then when you meet them in person, their vibe is like a hundred percent different than what you thought it was going to be. Yes. Like maybe yes. they're stiff or maybe they hold their shoulders manly, or maybe they're super like loose and girly. And you're like, wait, um, yeah. that's not what I pictured. It is pretty wild to think about. Like, it's especially like a LinkedIn profile. Like you yeah. see someone's picture and they yep. look like buttoned up and professional. Yep. And then you meet them in real life. And it's like, wow, you're not like nearly as like, like hoity toity as I thought you're going to be in no. person, you know? Right. right. So that's really I don't know. Funny. That's true. Um, I just sent this to you on Instagram, but I don't think you've checked it yet, but it's a list of, um, for first dates, Ooh. but where girls don't want to go. Okay. Oh my God. Let me see if I agree. What, give me a few. Um, but the thing is like, this is like a list. It's definitely like a straight facing list. Like okay, this is for okay. like, but even so I thought it was funny and like thought it was a little bit relatable. Um, especially since we talk, talk so much on here about like dating and dating, first dates yeah. and that kind of thing. Number yeah. one on the list of a place that a woman does not want to be taken on a first date is Cheesecake Factory. Okay. Can I tell you something really funny? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was where I went on my first date with my ex-husband. Really? And we Aww. stayed there for like seven hours. Okay. So I feel like these the this list is more so like these are acceptable dates in high school and college yeah and I will say in, like in this, is, this is going on you know 20 something years ago right when it wasn't such a funny place <laughs> I mean back then that was kind of fancy I used to go to the Cheesecake Factory in Buckhead and be like this is the height of luxury that's where we like, were that's where we really were. oh yeah. my god that's hilarious but their menu always drives me crazy because it's so long I'm like I, I don't want to read a book first Right, you know? right, right. The menu is so long and the like, order is like so huge. We don't have to go through all these, but pick another one that you think is so stupid. Another one that I was kind of irritated by was that it says no to coffee dates. But I'm like, if it's a first date, like I think a coffee date is perfect. I'll tell you what's wrong with the coffee date. I, I don't love a coffee date tells me that you don't want to commit an evening to me, which I get you don't and I don't either. So that's fine. But here's what I struggle with, with coffee dates and not necessarily a date with like someone I'm dating, but even like a business coffee date is I don't know what to do with you in the line waiting to get my coffee. <laughs> and I don't know what to do with you. Am I texting you like, Hey, what, what do you want? And then, then you walk in and now am I like making new fresh conversation in the line for the coffee? Yeah. Like, that part is a little awkward, awkward that it's like, They're, I'd rather just be at a restaurant where we can sit down, get down and coffee, order coffee and have somebody bring the coffee over because I'm yeah. awkward in the line with you for the coffee. That's tr very true. Yeah. Um, and I've experienced that for sure. Yeah. Cause that is, that is an awkward aspect. So I guess in that respect, then like a happy hour drink would be good. You know, cause that way you're yeah. sitting at a bar, you've got like a server, technically bartender. Um, the ones on here that I thought were like, hell yeah, you shouldn't be doing this on a first date is the movie date, like movie night at your house. Yeah. Like Netflix and chill, whatever that like yeah. immediately says to me, you just want to hook up. Yeah. Um, and then the other one somewhere that requires a long drive. Oh, I won't do it. I like, no, thank you. It's so I'm not, I'm not driving a long way to meet you and I'm not driving a long way in the car with you. Um, yeah. This, I got trapped once on a date in college because this guy was like, we met at a bar. This might've been like, maybe it was either a first or second date. I can't remember, but he's like, I'll come pick you up and we'll go have lunch. And I think we were supposed to go to Chili's. I was pretty excited about going to Chili's. Yeah, you were. You were going to get the quesadilla explosion sound. Chili's is number three on the list. You were getting the quesadilla explosion. <laughs> <laughs> And so he's like, he picks me up and he's like, all right, first I got to go, we got to go do something. And I'm like, uh, uh yes. No, he took and you I've on like, an errand. I've been kidnapped. It wasn't just an errand. We had to go see his grandma. Fuck you. And like, I was so mad about it. I was like, I just got swindled into 
fucking meeting your grandma on the but first wait, or second why date. Why would you think that you were going to come along for that? I, I think he just wanted to prove to his grandma that he knew a girl. Honestly, I think it was like, hey, grandma, look, I found one. Um, and then I got the ick about him because he, insist- well, first of all, he was like, we were hanging out another night and we got stopped by the cops at the bar and like questioned as to like whether or not we were drinking and he bolted and hid in the bathroom. <gasps> um, yeah. <What? laughs> and Wait, then he the fact he, listen shame on him for the grandma shame on you for being at the bar the second time I know I know and then like he went home with me and my friends that night and I wanted to get rid of the guy and he like would not leave and insisted on spending the night and I was like fucking whatever and then he wanted something to sleep in this is a guy wanted something to sleep in from me a girl who lived with nothing but girls and I gave him a pair of PJ pants that were purple and they fit him. I and I was like, I'm yeah. fucking done. I can't anymore. This I'm, is starting it. Get, I'm starting to get the <laughs> ick with you. <laughs> I was like 20. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. I, I was 20 years old. I'm sure I have a thousand of those. It was stories. slim pickings in Milledgeville, Georgia <laughs> for dateable men. oh god one time I remember in college this is really embarrassing for me actually really embarrassing let's hear it went um out out with I'm not even out with he didn't even take me out let's be really honest we were at a fraternity party where I end up staying and I take his he lets me take his car in his wasted state doesn't bring me home but lets me take the car home and then the next morning I guess like he didn't, he forgot, or I don't know what happened, but he is literally blowing me up to bring his fucking car back. (laughs) It was like humiliating. Like as if you stole it? Yeah. Like I'm like, not only did I like stay there like a loser, but then he's like, just bring me my fucking car back. Oh my God. I would have been like, let's have a refresher on what we talked about last time. You said I should take your car. Exactly. Clearly he wasn't interested. He was probably dating someone. I have no memory. I mean, I, my memory of it is just like embarrassment, unashamed. Oh my so God. I kind of blocked it, but you just made me think of it. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> don't let me forget to tell you my joke for your stand up. You're not going to tell it now? And hell no. I've got a, oh I, there's some transition pieces in it that I have to work on. Okay. You're, you don't want to do this yourself? No, no I'm not doing stand-up. It's a joke. You're going to do it. Oh my God. I did stand-up the other night. That's probably why my brain is still fried. I did 20 minutes and damn, it, I'm just like, I don't know how I survived it, but I did. Yeah. And it went, it went fairly well. Did you ever hear the, um, do you ever listen to Tig Notaro? Do you ever listen to her? Um, sometimes. Yeah. I do I love her. She just tells the story about how her mother-in-law had this joke for her stand up to do uh-huh. and that the brother-in-law couldn't even get the joke out because she was like laughing so hard <laughs> at the joke and she was like I really want you to tell it and Tig's like well you gotta tell me the joke like I don't and she's literally every time the mother-in-law would try to tell her the joke she couldn't get it out that was me trying to do my joke for Maria to tell her I'm gonna tell you oh my I god even get the joke out like Maria's That's hilarious. Like, it can't be that funny. I'm like, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, were, were you able to get it out to her? Well, it, as it came out, I realized it's not really, it, it has the potential to be really funny, but there's like a transition part of the joke that I can't seem to like get so i'm gonna i'm gonna give you the the framework sometimes that's the the funny part i guess i'm gonna give you the framework for the joke and you can work on the transitions okay okay um not right now though no we're not gonna work (laughs) out our jokes (laughs) um okay so we're talking today about something that we're getting a lot of emails about the holidays holidays mostly the one coming up is thanksgiving and people feeling this feeling of like they're divorced. There's been multiple things. One is like, where do I go? I am dating someone and am I going with them or are they coming with me? Is it too soon? But also the bigger one I'm hearing is people who were married and the, their ex-husband is dating someone who's now wanting to bring this person to Thanksgiving mm-hmm. um, and they're not dating anyone. 
and kind of that third wheel feeling of like, this is my fucking home, my children, my life, and I'm the third wheel. Yeah, that is hard. Yeah. But it's also kind of like what we're signing up for. Right. It's the, it's the tricky part of what you're signing up for. Yeah. I mean, it's not the part you were excited about. No, not at all. Um, and I mean, I guess this is kind of something as to what I've experienced over the years. It's like, you know, my ex has had a partner pretty much the whole time since we've been separated. So, and I have been sporadic in my partnerships. No, oh, you're growing, you're learning, you're figuring out what you want. I think there's something really beautiful and wonderful about that. Thank you for putting a positive spin. I do. I do. I think it's more sad when people just not, he's not, I'm sure he's great, but I'm just saying like, to me, the, the, you're doing exactly what you need to be doing. Well, this kind of like also boils down to like something. And we've touched on this in previous episodes and something that I'm kind of like weighing out and kind of going through my own process as far as like talking about this in a later episode, but like our expectations of coming out and like that prize of having a person with you. Gwen and Doyle story. Yeah. Like we all want to be like, yes, I came out and look what I want. I was swept off my feet. I fell madly in love. And got the solid human. Yeah. I never had to lay my head down alone. I never had to lay my head down alone. I never had to be worried about that. It's just, it was bliss from day one. I couldn't even really grieve because I was so madly falling in love. Right. And we all expect that. And, and when it doesn't happen and it's glaring in your face that your partner is showing up, your former partner, ex-husband is showing up to these events with someone else and that he came out on top. It really sucks. Yeah. I think there's a lot of layers to that. Define, define come out on top. I mean, I guess they moved on. I think that's, I think that's more so the, the harder pill to swallow is watching them move on and watching them do so in a way where they just kind of like, you feel like you were replaced really easily. Yeah. You know? Um, and I think it's a lot easier for men to move on. We see it yeah. all the time. You yeah. know, you see it um, in, you know, an older man, his wife dies. And next thing you know, he's, married to someone else now in some cases it's like a dateline situation and he was involved in her is it ever? demise yeah, order. God, but... <laughs> I all day. but don't you think in some ways too it's like their depth of feelings is not there is like uh, yeah it's almost like not all men but like I think about like my ex-husband he's much easier to just accept people where they are and can roll with it mm-hmm. whereas I'm like if you're not the perfect person for me then I want to learn from this and grow. And like, I, he could, he could settle in pretty quickly. Yeah. I think that, and again, like you said, not all men are like this, no. that's for sure. But that there most men, I would say, don't have like this emotional depth and a lot of women don't either. Yeah, you know, there's the, either. there's the women that can bounce around to relationships. They don't, they're not they that upset. Yeah. When, when, when something goes awry, they just move on, find someone else. Um, and it's kind of like the fact that a lot of us, especially I think in the late in life community, we have done a deep dive. We've got like a lot of emotional depth and it's like a blessing and a curse. It's a curse. Like it's, a curse. it's great. It reminds me of, I have this, the, my friend that I talk about that we used to move with that like, she was my dearest friend for many, many years. And then we never speak anymore. Uh huh. Um, we were both grew up Catholic and I had all these questions about the faith and about why do you believe that? Or that doesn't seem real or, and she literally was just like, why can't you just accept it? Like, and just hmm. be happy. Like she didn't have, it's not that she didn't have the depth, but in some ways she didn't have the depth to like worry about it. It was like beyond her scope. It's just blind faith. And she could be happy with that. And that was enough for her versus like I needed to deep dive into it and then in the deep dive comes questioning and in the questioning comes pain mm-hmm. and comes dissatisfaction yeah that she never had to deal with because she never dove in she wasn't even going to ask the question to find out so she didn't have to feel the, the pain of it 
that I, I think that is a really good example because I think that's kind of who I was. Yeah. Like in my, or up until about my mid thirties. Right. You know, I just didn't think outside of anything else than what was in front of me. Right. Took everything at face value, like I'm whatever. Eating Wonder Bread. I'm eating Wonder Bread because I don't even know there is sourdough. Right. Yeah. At the bakery. And yeah, but like, do, is ignorance bliss? Like, is that the way you want to live your life? I don't know. Cause like I, to me, she still seems pretty fucking happy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's true. It's almost like, you know, Pandora's box. They say we've opened it up and can't stuff it all back in. Yeah. Um, but I don't know for me, I, I like it better this way. I like kind of questioning myself and questioning like what's around me and who's in my life and why and what I'm doing. Um, and can I say and, one more thing in relation to what you're saying is that it's also like, I believe in your capacity to be happy matches your capacity to be sad. Like, I think that there's not, there's a, a continuum. And as far as you go one way, you can go the other way. And the same is true. If you never let yourself be really sad, you're really incapable of being blissfully happy. And I would rather ride it than just live in the middle. That's a really good so, point. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead with what you were saying. Though. No, like I, I totally get that. Like, cause that's just it. It's like, yeah. Like now I experience sadness way deeper yeah. than what I felt ever before. Right. And that sucks. And like when something isn't going right, it sucks a lot harder. Yeah. Um, and kind of with this, this holiday situation, I think it's one of those things that every year is different. Every year for the past five years has looked different and I think this is the time of year that it's all kind of thrown in your face about like what it used to look like right you know safe it's easy and safe easy and safe um and especially if you are like trying to navigate this whole thing of like being on good terms with your ex and your ex's family it's this fucking reminder of like what you how different your life is now and like what you left and like while you're still help celebrating holidays together it's not the same no and like, it never will be again everything's a little different now um and on top of that one thing that i find really overwhelming is the amount of people now like now it's it's no longer like oh yeah it's just gonna be the four of us on christmas morning and we're gonna open gifts and then maybe we'll go visit the grandparents at their house like it's no longer feels like this intimate thing that it used to be it's like especially like thanksgiving is gonna be like pure chaos in my house like now does his girlfriend ever have feelings around like seeing your mom and dad for thanksgiving she loves my parents okay so she'll go over there well, she won't go over to their house per se, but she will like come to my house or what she'll see them. And she's super sweet. Like she checks in on them too sometimes. So, wow. yeah. Um, so wait a minute. It's not even that she, this is unbelievable. Like I do that with my ex-husband's dad. I love him. I call him all the time. I see him. I invite him to go places. But it's kind of like a sensitive issue in my relationship mm -hmm. that I put for you to do that. Well, it's more just like he gets more of my effort than maybe her parents do. But partly that's because he's alone here in Atlanta and I've known him so long. Yeah. His whole ch I mean, yeah, I grew up with him basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like another parent to you. Yeah. I think that's understandable. But she doesn't have any feelings around your ex-husband still being very invested in your mom and dad well i mean i wouldn't say it's not like he's going over there or anything like that if i needed something like with them then he would most likely try to help out in some way um but like it's more so like just checking in like she she and him like check in just you know how are you doing that kind of thing like on social media or like maybe a text okay. um that kind of stuff. And then like, yeah, if it's a family event, we're all there. They're definitely like giving my parents hugs and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So it's sweet. So tell me what this year will look like for you. Um, 
this year, I think that I'm hosting Thanksgiving at my house again. And he'll come with her. No, why doesn't she care? Like, I feel like we would have feelings around. I want it at my house. Well, one reason why I said that I would do it at my house is because my older sister is coming and her Mm -hmm. two kids, and it's just going to be like a lot of people. And I feel kind of bad being like bringing all my people to his house, okay, like my siblings and everything. But it's still kind of like up in the air, like as to where we're. Do you think behind closed doors she's saying to your ex husband, "Why is is our whole plan going over to your ex wife's house?" No, because this is kind of how we've always done it. We've always done Thanksgiving together. And does somebody have the kids? Like, is somebody like it? He typically has them on Thursdays. So we're for the holidays, we're just kind of sticking to our normal schedule and not okay. doing like a whole week thing. Okay. Um, like in our child custody thing, I think it says like it's supposed to be like they're with you even years, with me odd years, like based on XYZ holiday. And like I think we switch off with Thanksgiving and Christmas, but it's really we're just kind of doing it like normal, normal schedule. Um, typically I'll have them like the days leading up to Christmas and on Christmas morning, or if I don't have them on Christmas morning, I spend the night at his house. Um, and then he'll have them like the days after Christmas. Got it. But again, I don't know if we're doing that this year or not. Like work stuff is kind of complicated. And I mean, I guess that's another thing is like, you write all this shit down on paper and it's like, it's gotta be this way. And I know that some people like live and die by like their child Maria, custody agreement. Maria's custody arrangement, they live and die by it. But for us, it's just kind of like, it's, it's fucking life, you know? Yeah. Shit's gonna come okay, up. So talk, talk to the woman right now who is going through, ex-husband has moved on and she's alone. This is the holiday and there she's going to be there with the group feel single you know the, this is like i said the perspective shift that i've had on finding that person and finding that prize and what i've realized is a lot of people focus so much on finding that person that they end up with the wrong person for sure and it's toxic. It's not fun. It's not nearly as happy as you thought it would be, but you're like, but I've got someone by my side. I've got someone to attend these events with, but then you think about like, how fun are those events when you're like a little worried about how this person is going to act in this situation? Like, how great is this? And I think that those people that are alone, like there's a power in being alone and they need to embrace that part. And like, look at that as your badge of honor. Right. You know, you've, you've had the confidence to leave and you have the confidence right now to be alone and and to own it and be proud of it. And to know that like, you can, you can still go in that room and, and be friendly with everybody and be happy and be happy that you, while you're single, you're not in a relationship with someone who sucks. And even if you haven't, like, I, I can't tell you how many women it's like, how many women we've met through this process that when we met them were scared, you know, sad, emotional, no idea of the future, who now are like finding community first, getting a group of friends. And then next thing I know, I see them posting on social media that they're engaged or they're, I can think of two people in the last seven days that I've seen engagement announcements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, I think those are like, not that is not the end game. But I guess what I'm saying is it's a, it's a continuum of growth and you're not just going to hit the finish line. Not if you're going to do run the race correctly or not. There's yeah. a whole continuum of training and people that just end up at the finish line in the first couple of months, first even couple of years. I'm just not sure I buy that you put the, the growth in. I just don't. Yeah. I mean, some people get lucky. You yeah. know, some people get lucky and meet someone right out the gate. Sure. And great and perfect. And they, click maybe, and it's the best thing ever together. maybe you're and maybe yeah yeah absolutely I but i think more those people not. and those people that are going into this like you said single and feeling like really alone like i i totally get it but like embrace that and see it as a power thing yeah it's a powerful thing to do 
And it's um, one day, like the other thing I think I remember when I was first getting divorced and I was, it was Christmas. I think I've told the story where my mom came, my mom and dad came, we had to get a tree like last minute. And I had a lot of things to be excited about. I was in my new place and, but I remember my mom being scared for me and like the way she verbalized you're going to be okay. She was saying you're going to be okay, but she put a little bit of a question mark on it. Like you're going to be okay. Like kind of at the mm, end. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, wait, I what, what? like, wait, am I not? Like, <laughs> um, and I remember like thinking like it really scared me, like hearing mm. her say it that way. It just gave me like a pit in my stomach of like, I don't know, even though leading up to their visit, I had like, been busy decorating and like excited about my place. And I, I just, the kids were excited and I just felt like that moment of fear and then Christmas came and it was fine, but it was like a little sad, but you know why your mom sounded like that, right? She loves me. I mean, she loves you and she is scared for you. Yeah. Like, that's and that's just reality. it. Like I, your, your family has a vision of who you are and who you were going to be. and like your mom spent all this time in your life thinking that you were super safe. Yeah. And then I here you are this time thinking I'm super yeah. safe. Yeah. And then like, here you are saying like, mm, I'm, I'm jumping off a cliff and yeah. your, your mom's, you know, trying to, she wants to hold you back from jumping. Yeah. She also knows she needs to let you jump. Yeah. So and there I is think no there's right. Like, I think that's the other thing that helped me is like, there's no like, Oh, you fucked up. You made the wrong decision. Your life is ruined it doesn't work that way. It's not so binary of like, you're, if you pick A or B, if you pick the wrong one, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. It's more like they're both can be beautiful and wonderful. And you have to just, you know, live with that decision and make pivot if it doesn't work. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's like, I think that there is no, I don't know, to the person alone on Thanksgiving, I think what you need to do is kind of what you said is just go into it as like, these are fully growth moments of like, I can be here and I can be okay. And I can get good sleep the night before, make good to, you know, conversations or work hard at that. It doesn't have to be, it's a day. Yeah. Just know that you're in the journey. And, and you're in a room with people who want you to be there. For sure. For the most part. Yeah. For the most part. <laughs> if there's no one in there that doesn't want you there, like reevaluate. Yeah. But re-evaluate. Also like if your kids are there, they want you there, you right. know? Um, I think the other thing to speak to is the people that are alone at, at right now, like maybe yeah. they don't have that good situation where their husband is like letting them come over for Thanksgiving and, or Christmas and their kids are with the other parent for the holiday. Like, yeah, that's, that's a massive fucking bummer. But I think the way to treat it that way, can you hear this helicopter that's flying over my house right now? No. Okay. There must be I'm, a not, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm being invaded, but um, like, and this is what I used to do when I lived in, when I was a reporter and I wouldn't get off work for Thanksgiving or Christmas, I would just treat it like another day. Yeah. Like go to work. I might like treat myself to something like, or order Chinese food, something like that. And, and like watch movies once I was off work but just treat it like another day. Or if you can find some of those people in your community that also might be alone and reach out to them and be like, Hey, do you want to do like a Friendsgiving thing? Yeah. Um, it doesn't wasn't have to it be on Thanksgiving day? Right. Wasn't it Milena that came yeah, to your house? She came to my house when we first got divorced and we all cried. Like I'll never, we sat at the dining room table bawling. Like for part. I mean, of it. Okay, now add the uplifting part, Allie. But it was like it was like okay, <laughs> like we were still okay. We had each other. But it also probably felt a little therapeutic to it like was. sit there. And it was, and it wasn't. Sit in it. I think um, my ex was there. We didn't. The kids we kept it together for, but then after that is when we both were like, it is different now. But I think it's not even that you're coming out. Like anyone who gets divorced feels this way. And yeah, you're, it's truly a different thing too, because you're in some cases blending families. And so you're also like your holidays aren't necessarily your own anymore. To your point, it's not this like private little thing where it's these parents and these children, like the dream that I thought I had is no longer. 
because it's, it's not, I have other people that I have to be a priority now. So it's not like it's just my kids and I can just like focus on them and what's their experience in this moment. It's like, there's so many other players now, even when you have moved on, you know, it's yeah. not, it gets, it's all of a sudden everything is settled. It's not, mm-hmm. it's, I don't know what we're doing for Thanksgiving. There's probably going to be a few arguments. There's going to be a few negotiating a little bit of negotiation and then we'll settle on something that might or might not may or may not feel good to me. Yeah. And like also the blending thing, it's like you keep getting big, you know, like yeah. more and more people and yeah. like where do we put everybody? Yeah. And like last year I had my girlfriend helping me out, bringing in extra tables and all this stuff. I don't know if that's going to be a thing this year where I have the extra help. And I've got even more people coming with the addition of my sister and my niece and nephew and possibly my older brother, but I'm not sure if he's coming or not. I haven't seen him in a few years. And yeah, it's like, where do, where are we? Then we've got like my ex-husband and his girlfriend and her family and his family. And it's like, Jesus Christ. Like at this point we need to like rent out like a hotel ballroom. (laughs) But I guess what, like a cool blessing. I mean, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Like here's a, and that's just it too. You know, you're asking me about like how they, how my ex is and his girlfriend with my parents, like her mom and stepdad are like super nice to me. Yeah. Um, like I, I can sit there and talk to her stepdad for like hours. Like he's, what he's actually your- invited yeah. me up to his house, like in Maryland. Wow. Okay. Talk to me about though, the moment in time where you're sitting there to like some of these emails where he's with this woman in love and you're there with your friends. Is there a feeling of like, I'm ashamed that I'm not here with someone? What are, what's the feeling? Identify the feeling. I think, th- again, I think again, like, you know, that feeling is more so just wanting to prove something. Yeah. I guess I would be very proud to have like a wonderful partner next to me. And I've had that before, you know, mm-hmm. um, and it feels really good. But also like, I don't think that needs to be the end game. And I don't think that a person needs to be anything that's like validating to my experience. Yeah, it's so true. God, yeah. They shouldn't, like it shouldn't, it shouldn't validate your experience. Like, I think what really validates my experience is my life as a whole and like what I've done since then and like how I have made a shit ton of friends and I have, you know, continued to work in my career and bought a house and running a household on my own. My kids are happy. Like, and I'm doing new things. Like all that stuff matters way more than the person sitting next to me. Yeah. And I think that's like, zoom out, look at the bigger picture. Don't look at whether or not you have a partner or not in this situation. And don't be like, woe is me. This is so sad. I came out and now I'm single or I came out and, you know, I got my heart broken. My biggest takeaway is, you know, a a person is not a prize. This is not, that's not going to validate your experience. Embrace who you are as a human, how far you've come. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Mel Robbins, in case that isn't Yeah, Yeah, you've been sending me some. But I mean, she just really has this perspective that can help you shift so many things in your life, you know? Um, So I highly recommend her podcast. Um, for a helping, tool especially in the toolbox. yeah, the tool in the toolbox, especially as we, we get ahead here, we've got Halloween in a couple of days. That's another beast. Like my, my daughter's decided that she wants to trick or treat with her friends. And I'm heartbroken, but oh, I can same. follow. Oh my God. Yeah. I literally just told Reed. I'm like, you can invite everyone here, but I can't have you leave me. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be this soon. Like we're not not dressing up together. You're better than me. I said, no, I can't handle it yet. I'm not, I said, I'm too fragile. I literally said that's too fragile. I'm too fragile. You can't. That's hilarious. Um, Well, I have been a little bit more firm in where we're trick-or-treating. Like I'm not going to a different neighborhood than than Kaylin. Like, no, sorry. sorry. And you're all all going there. This is what we do. We're here. Period. Yeah. Um, well, I have to run, my friend. Alrighty. But um, have a great rest of your day. Me Happy too. Halloween early. Yay. I'm so excited for Halloween. I love it. I know. So. We're having a decorating party tonight. We're a little late, but whatever. 
Um, and we'll chat later. All righty. Goodbye. Bye. Want to support the Lesbian Chronicles podcast? Rate us and write a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We love listener feedback. If you'd like to share your story, email us at melissaandallie at gmail.com. That's Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-A, and Allie, A-L-L-I, at gmail.com. Or follow us on Instagram at Lesbian Chronicles.